Welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and I travel full time with my cat and my FJ Cruiser. Sometimes we take the travel trailer with us, other times all we've got is our overlanding setup. Last week we went off-roading in Mexico. This week we're crossing the border back into the United States so I can install my rooftop tent. Last week, I shared that there was a bit of drama going on on the back end with the delivery of my GFC Superlight tent. So here's what happened. Two weeks into being in Mexico, GFC let me know that my tent was ready for delivery, but then I now had to find somewhere close to the US border to have it delivered. Well, a neighbor that had taken a grandfatherly interest in me because this dude was really old, suggested that he was going back to Arizona and uh, he could accept the delivery and I could drive up, have it installed, and come back to Mexico. So I agreed. Shortly after this, though, this dude started uh, trying to get me to come into his trailer to watch movies at night, stuff like that, which I said no to. We can hang out and talk and chill with friends, but be alone with you in your trailer at night? No, sir. Apparently, he did not like that because when it was time for my tent to be delivered, neither him nor his friend would answer his phone or accept the delivery. So I had to grab another one of my friends from Mexico with his pickup truck and drive all the way to Mesa, Arizona to get my tent. This is my first time crossing back into the US and this is how it works. So you get to this first window and you hand your passport or whatever other travel documents to the guy. You see, this is another officer walking around my vehicle with a drug dog checking for, well, duh, drugs. In the meantime, I'm being asked questions like, what was I doing in Mexico? Where am I going to in the United States? And they check the undercarriage of the vehicle with a special mirror. Directly ahead of me is a very large machine that scans your vehicle. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. If it's not, you go to the right where that orange building is. If it is open, the officers will direct you to drive through. You should not stop. Continue onwards when they tell you at about 5 miles per hour as per the sign which you can see on the left. Once you make it through, they will tell you exactly where to stop up ahead. When you stop, they will ask you what the year of your vehicle is, uh, and then they shout out the year, the model, and the make of the vehicle to I don't know who. And when they're done checking, whatever they're checking, they send you on your way. The drive to Mesa, Arizona felt impossibly long, but eventually I got there, got my tent, got my booster shot at Walmart, and then started the two and a half hour drive back to my friend's ranch so that I could get the tent installed. Unfortunately, the stock bolts that come with my tent were way too long for the thickness or lack thereof of my crossbars on my roof rack. So we just got it on good enough for me to go to bed and figured out, you know what, when I get up in the morning, we can tackle that again. Looking down at the spare tire of the FJ, you can see my footprints. And that's because when I first ordered the GFC Superlight tent in February of 2021, it did not come with a ladder option. So when they finally came out with one shortly before I got my tent, I was like, you know what, I'll just use it as is and see if I need one. The solution we came up with was to add washers to fill the gaps. I will say that GFC reached out to me and said that that is not their preferred solution. They prefer that you go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and just get a shorter bolt or screw that will fit uh, the thickness or lack thereof of your roof rack bar, but I was in the middle of nowhere so that was just not an option for me. 
So my first impressions of the GFC Superlight, it is really well built, really well constructed. Even my friend who is way more experienced with outdoor gear was very impressed by the quality and could not believe that I had paid $1,300 for it. Usually a hard top tent goes for anywhere from like $2,500 to $5,000. And despite getting it at a cheaper price point, I did not lose anything in quality. It's really easy to put up, really easy to take down. And I love that I can zip everything up with my mattress, sleeping bag, and pillow inside and be just fine. Since having my super light, I have used it in weather as cold as 29 degrees and I have seen it withstand a serious, serious windstorm that took down my ground tent. So I'm really impressed with this tent. This is one of only two trips I've ever taken with the rooftop tent that I did not have my cat Shadow with me. Getting in and out by myself is fine. When I have shadow is the time when I start thinking maybe I should get a ladder and so I think that I will, not the one that sold by GFC but another one I like that I think will work better for me. If you've never gone rooftop tent camping before and you're thinking of doing it or you're about to do it, a good bit of advice I can tell you is not to bring knickknacks into the tent. In a ground tent, it's really not that big of a deal, but when you go, ooh, let me get a water bottle, what about a cookie, what about my tablet, what about my phone, what about my Bluetooth speaker, what about this book? When it's time to go up and down, up and down, getting all those things out, whether you have a ladder or not, it is going to be time consuming and annoying. So what I do now is I put everything in a bag and then take the bag down when I go. I then checked the bolts before I left, everything was nice and tight. I will say, even though GFC doesn't like this solution, I have not had any issues with it so far and I still check them. One of the reasons I bought the GFC Superlight is it's supposed to be the lightest hardtop rooftop tent on the market and I can confirm, I barely felt it on the way back. Unless you don't mind a long wait while people beg you for money and try to wash your vehicle with dirty water, I would recommend trying to avoid this traffic that I saw going back to Rocky Point and the way to do so is to not try to leave Mexico on a Sunday. I've told you guys before to make it home before sunset, thankfully I did, and then I got to spend some time with my beloved kitty cat who had been in Mexico while I was in Arizona getting my rooftop tent installed. Next week we're going across the border again. I'm going to go from Mexico to Arizona to Vegas and back because I need to pick up my camping gear for a trip to New Mexico and I will explain exactly what's going on next week. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. I will see you next Friday. Bye.